the city's rebuild, and um, I know that the commission's excited, and I'm hoping y'all are as excited as we are. Um, that being said, I'm going to pass this over to the city manager and, and let her uh, get, get this thing started. Thank you. Thank you, Mar Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, just so you know that uh, we are streaming live and uh, that people are watching, we set up uh, chairs in all of our rooms so that if folks want to come out and participate, they can still do that. We have all three architects here today. We have Florida, Florida Architect, we have Dag, and we also have Mott McDonald. Um, just a couple of things that I um, wanted to go over with you in terms of where we are and how we got here. Um, last de December 2019, gosh, it's been that long ago, um, that we put out a bid for uh, the rebuild and the design of this uh, city. Uh, the commission passed uh, the three architects in January of 2020. Uh, then uh, we got all of the contracts in place. I think it was literally around March, most of them in place with some um, additional uh, contract information that had to, to be done, but we got most of the contracts in place for the rebuild. And uh, the architects been working and kind of formulating a plan, a design plan, working with the city, lots of meetings with um, city officials, some commissioners uh, talking about where we wanted to go with the city. Uh, remember that they reminded us, and I think it's very, very important that we remember that we are not just building for 2021. We're, we're building for 25, 50 years later uh, when most of us are gone. Uh, but we want to leave a city in good shape, in good hands, and uh, that it still stands well. And so um, in August of 2020, the commission approved uh, DAG Architect to go ahead with the horizontal construction design of the ball fields and also approved the vertical design um, for the sports complex. That was in August of 2020. And also in August of 2020, the commission approved P uh, the design work uh, for PD, excuse me, for New City Hall and Chambers. Uh, and then we came back in September and the commission approved the, the design work for um, the PD and the EOC. And then we came back after we kind of got a handle on things. Um, the commission also approved for us to move forward with uh, the demolition of the library and um, Old City Hall, keeping the historic side of Old City Hall so that we could plan for the future as well. And we also, within December of 2020, approved uh, the, the uh, firm Mott McDonald to go ahead and start the design of, of both the, the all three public works, um, fire station number one and library. And so they have, they, I mean, the firms have been working very hard since then to get these plans up up to date, they are working fiercely. We are on a, um, a fast track in some sense, uh, making sure that we follow all the guidelines. And remember that some of the slowdown, it may not be particularly on FEMA, and, and I don't want to say that at all. It is making sure that we follow all of the guidelines so that we can get reimbursed. And so some things are going to be a little bit slower because we want to get that approval from our consult consultants as well as um, our uh, FEMA uh, officials saying, yes, this is, is good to go. And that was particularly true when we tried to do put the bid out to make sure we had all the language in there so that it would be no questions when <laughs> we um, were reimbursed. Uh, a couple of things to note is that there are some buildings that have been obligated, uh, that we have money standing on the side. One of those buildings is the sports complex. The sp sports complex has about $1.4 million, uh, excuse me, $2.7 million that has been obligated for it. 
Um, that's the sports complex. And then on uh, for PD chambers, we have about $1.4 million that's been obligated. We have for the library, we have $445,000 that's been obligated for the library. And we're still working on some other obligations and insurance money that we want to, to make sure that when we finish rebuilding this city, we don't owe a thing because through FEMA, uh, reimbursements, insurance, uh, we will be well set to rebuild a city and uh, the city will not owe any money in terms of uh, trying to pay off debt for the rebuild. And with that said, I will turn it over to our first architect firm, which is Florida Architect. Thank you, Ms. Gaynor, commissioners, public. Thank you for inviting us to update you. Uh, so this is a 60% construction document. You may need to pick up the, the um, mic to hold it so that those, at, those people at home can hear as well. Okay. Yeah. So we're at a 60% construction document phase uh, review. Uh, we've updated everything for everyone to, uh, to see what's happening here. Um, uh, okay, so to orient everyone, this is Ohio, West 9th Street, Pennsylvania. Um, the old city hall and, and garden, which will be, the service center will remain. Uh, the new city hall and chamber police department and EOC. So even though we contracted this to have separate um, pieces and parts, it became apparent through some cost analysis that by combining the city hall, chamber, police, and EOC into one structure, we could e efficiently utilize the funding uh, and get the whole building um, as a, uh, basically as a, uh, as a protected building from hurricanes, impact, uh, because the EOC standards and police department standards are very rigid. So by combining all that into one structure, uh, we're using a ICF, uh, insulated concrete form uh, structure, uh, which will resist uh, Cat 5 hurricanes, 200 mile per hour winds, impact, small arms fire, uh, and we've put all the equipment up on the roof, so uh, none of it is occupying valuable ground space, and it is protected by 200 mile an hour uh, walls. Uh, so I think we're making the most of both sets of funding for that. Uh, there is a phased plaza uh, that turns the corner here, so it comes right off uh, the edge where we're expanding a lake or the pond uh, all the way to 9th Street and that main axis will enter right into City Plaza uh, and turn the corner to Ohio. So there will be a lot of opportunities for art fairs and, and just all kinds of, of civic activities on this side. So we have secure parking. Uh, the EOC standards not only require full generator, it requires a backup generator. So the most cost effective situation is to get a package unit with two generators built in fuel storage. It has the protected enclosures uh, and a short distance to run. Uh, staff parking on this side and then public parking on the corner here at Pennsylvania and 9th Street uh, with the retention pond to handle all of this impervious surface. So the groundwater, of course, is very high. Uh, this has to be a wet pond, and because it has to be a wet pond, the, the rules uh, state how it will be constructed. So it will be um, an eight foot deep at the deepest end to resist weed growth and help maintain it. Okay, let me go back. Okay, so just to give you an over, overview here before we get into some of the specifics, uh, this is City Plaza uh, right here. 
There's an alternate for a covered walkway that will connect this covered walkway from the entrance of City Hall on the west side, on the plaza side, and connect it so that city staff can get from one place to another undercover because this service center will remain in full service. The chamber is on this side of the building. That is the, the, the entrance into City Hall on the plaza side. So looking at the floor plan, the first floor plan, you can see the chamber is here. There's a slight two and a half, three inch rise where the commission uh, bench is. Uh, and then uh, we have some visitors and podiums for presentations. And in a continental seating arrangement, we have 229 seats shown. Uh, obviously during COVID, you're, you know, you may spread those out a little bit. Uh, but the main entrance from the plaza side is here. The main entrance directly across the street from public parking is here. Uh, so we have a covered walkway going over to the separate police department entrance on this side. Um, so trying to be considerate to visitors and staff. Um, the entrance into the chamber is primarily here uh, where they have the storage because this could be used for events. We could have banquets where we have tables in the round. It could be used for training. It will be used for uh, first responders during a, 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 a disaster event to set up their cots and for sleeping quarters uh, with a separate entrance here. Uh, we do have a back, a back exit uh, for the for the commissioners, uh, and then a break room to serve refreshments and to support various functions, catering, uh, what have you. So when a visitor comes in, either the east or west ent uh, entrance, uh, this secure. Um, so that that area is up up here, and and the city manager and assistant city manager staff. We'll be able to go up these stairs directly to the command suite of the police department uh, or have a secondary exit here. Uh, so there's a small workroom, huddle room uh, for smaller uh, workshops and events and, and, and work activities. Uh, and then there's a larger shared conference room for larger staff meetings that could be scheduled for any of the departments when they have larger meetings. Uh, the yellow is the human resources, so it is kind of up front here. Um, sorry, my thumb is... Okay. Uh, so that's the yellow area with a, a separate outdoor entrance uh, and a training area for human resources. Uh, the next department over is finance and procurement. Uh, and you can see that's a little larger of an operation. And all the entrance doors to these areas are also access controlled uh, before you break out into these individual offices. So they have everything they need in procurement, uh, including a workroom, copy room, file, storage, and then the back exit, which could go directly out into uh, secure parking or out, out this door to the public parking area. Elevator is here for the police department and EOC. Network operations and information management is all here in the center. Uh, so the NOC, the network operations center, uh, being kind of the heart of this part of the building. Um, these this color area here, there's three, four offices that are intended for growth uh, so that we don't, you know, find ourselves two years into occupying the building and all of a sudden we need some office space. Um, this area here is CRA and planning with a shared conference room between all the departments. Uh, and then communications, public relations, has several offices and some storage, and then the Municipal Executive Center uh, here in this sector. So restrooms in blue uh, and support in gray. 
So you can see it's pretty efficient, efficient from the mechanical electrical side. Uh, we're able to uh, use the second floor uh, main mechanical space here and down feed the first floor and also the commission chamber below. Uh, so we're pretty efficient on the net to gross uh, for MEP. On the second floor, when you come off the elevator or the stairs to the police department, you're in a secure vestibule. You're in a secure lobby, bulletproof glass. Uh, all the doors are access controlled and you have to be checked in or escorted uh, to uh, visit any of the other areas uh, on this floor. So there is a public restroom for people who are waiting uh, and there's a restroom convenient for somebody in reception who is escorting and receiving visitors. The first department, the first section of the police department is code enforcement. Um, uh, so they have a workroom and, and access to an outdoor uh, patio area for, for breaks. Uh, and then as the patrolmen or the detectives come in, uh, there's an evidence and lab evidence uh, being processed for chain of custody. And we talked with the chief today that his department has looked at this and we're gonna rearrange this just a little bit, uh, but we're so pleased that, that they've really dug in and done a, a, a good review. Um, so then the next section is detectives. Uh, there's one interview room. There's really not um, uh, suspects that uh, uh, will be brought here on a regular basis. There is an interview room, but most of the evidence and most of the uh, uh, suspects that will go directly to Bay County, uh, to the jail facility to be processed. Uh, there is a huddle room and a work room uh, over in this area as well. The next division down is the commanders in chief. So we have a separate conference room, uh, some storage, uh, you know, everything that that section, that level of management <coughs> needs for the entire operation. So the chief's office here, the commander's offices, uh, work rooms and, and support. Down here is the patrol division. So we have a large multi-purpose, very flexible squad room. Um, these movable furniture can all be moved uh, around for different training sessions or whatever needs to occur. Uh, at that particular time, there is a video wall here. So multiple screens and a video wall configuration to address the, uh, the, the squad and, and have uh, direction for, for their shift uh, up here in display. And then the sergeants are here uh, with a storage for gear, first responders, because remember when we have an event uh, this squad room can be flexible enough to set up for, for patrolmen and first responders. So there's gear, specialized gear, and, and that stored in, in these storage rooms. Uh, there's a vending area because we know that, that we have three shifts uh, and, and they'll be able to get you know, coffee, soft drinks, and snacks. Uh, we want to make sure that they're taken care of there. Uh, this area is the armory. It's in the center and it's concrete walls. These thick walls here are the ICF formed concrete walls that go through the structure. Um, so that, that is secure as well as evidence storage in the lab. Uh, and the network operations center is a secure area. So this is where the servers will be for EOC and the police department. And they'll run directly over to dispatch uh, and, the and the situation room, sorry, did it again. Um, so during an event, uh, this folding wall will open and this video wall here for uh, things that are going on in the community uh, can be briefed by people at the EOC and then the same, the dispatch will continue to be able to operate here with ham radio and these folks are in a secure area and they cannot leave this area during their shift. So they have their own restroom, their own little break room, 
a little smoke patio uh, to be able to go outside. Uh, and then the assistant commander in charge of this part of the operation. So we have several secure areas uh, that are uh, identified and meet the national standards uh, set, set forth for these areas. Now, of course, we want all these folks to be physically in good shape and to be tested. So we have a physical fitness and testing area here uh, set aside. We're adding some more equipment. Uh, but basically, the list of equipment that the chief has given us uh, for a wide range of activities um, and testing uh, in this area. And then there's some uh, lockers with benches uh, here and some showers and some restrooms, uh, shared restrooms here. Uh, and then the last major component is for the EOC operations, first responders, uh, because remember, you can't go to a restaurant when an event happens. There won't be very many open, probably. So uh, as a requirement of this operation, there is a production kitchen that can support 250 to 300 meals three times a day uh, all on the emergency generator, and it has all the health department requirements with restrooms, custodial, uh, cooler, freezer, dry storage, uh, and then a eating area here that could spill over into the squad room depending on the need. So they're located adjacent to each other. Any questions so far? Sure. Sorry. Um, I'm curious about the kitchen area. This is on the second floor. Where is the closest elevator for food to be brought up to the kitchen? So the elevator has to go is here, and they'll park in the secure area, go in the door downstairs, get up the elevator, and, and come through here to get the food. Now, the food will primarily only be delivered when an event is, mm -hmm. appears to be imminent. Mm -hmm. So, because we don't want produce, you know, going mm -hmm. bad in the cooler, and, you know, there could be freezer stock, because it'll be frozen, mm -hmm. uh, but they'll be able to either go this way or that way into the kitchen. Okay, because there's thousands of pounds that, of food that are delivered by the food trucks almost every other day. So if, I mean, I'm just thinking they're gonna be downstairs. I know there's nothing you can do about it, but. Well, like I say, the, uh, this operation, the kitchen, really is not operational unless there is an imminent threat or, or right. a hurricane that looks like it's going to come. Sure. You know, there'll, there'll be minimal stock. There'll be dry goods stocked and there'll be freezer stocked. But the only thing that they'll really need to bring, bring in is anything that's perishable. Right. And they'll put that in the, cool, in the cooler. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? Okay, so um, if you remember from all the workshops, you know, we started off with some shapes and some things. Well, we've got it all pretty much nailed down now uh, and articulated. So the first view, I'm gonna take you around the development and start here on Ohio Avenue looking east. So we're at Ohio, that's the uh, city plaza uh, that will be used for events so that the community going by, if they didn't see the flyer, they're gonna see tents and stuff going on, they're gonna go, oh boy, what's going on? I, you know, maybe it's an art show or maybe it's a food show or, or whatever. So keeping this view open and being able to expand those activities all the way from the building out to the street was an important element for our site planning. The city hall, the old city hall, uh, and this end of this is this. So this is a closer view on Ohio Avenue. Um, we are currently uh, getting a demolition contract together to take some of the heavily damaged and extremely moldy parts of the, the newer, not so well constructed building uh, demolished there. Uh, 
and it really does, the cost to try to repair any of that and do anything with it uh, was much better to, to go ahead and, and remove that part, but preserve the statement that has always known, that, that Lynn Haven has always been known for, which is this part of the old city hall. And I'm gonna show you more and talk more about this as we go through, but I just wanted to give you a, a little insight there. So as we approach the corner of 9th Street in Ohio, uh, this will begin to see the massing of the City Hall and Police EOC building back, back here. Uh, and this behind this is actually a, a city garden, a botanical garden that's connected to the old City Hall in between these two buildings. And here you can start to see the edge uh, the library is being demolished for construction of the new library, as uh, Mrs. Gaynor uh, pointed out earlier. So we're expanding that pond to make safe access into Sheffield Park when we have events. Sorry, my thumbs again. Uh, and we'll put an, an aerator fountain here to mark the, the boundary of, of this edge. So as we go down 9th Street, uh, we're not tearing up 9th Street as part of this project. It's in the master plan to put pavers there, slow traffic down, not have parking pulling into traffic. Uh, you know, so that's part of the master plan there. But all of the city plaza, the gardens, the building is part of this construction activity. So going down a little bit further, this will be the views that you see uh, uh, into City Plaza from 9th Street, looking northeast. And then as we go further down 9th Street here, this will be the side facing Sheffield Park, looking northwest. So it's, it's a modest building, but uh, the, the type of wall construction allows us to uh, put a little fenestration, put a little, you know, a little articulation into it so it doesn't look like a cheap building. Something you can be proud of for decades and decades. So then as we get to the corner of uh, 9th and Pennsylvania, this is really the public everyday entrance side of the building. This is more the neighborhood side, you know, so we wanted it to feel like uh, a resident would be comfortable, you know, walking their dog or, or, or walking children down through the neighborhood and have it be a, a more uh, welcoming experience rather than something that, that made you feel like you shouldn't be here kind of a thing. Uh, and so hopefully we've achieved that here with the look. Uh, you can easily identify, we're in the parking lot now kind of at the corner. Uh, looking across at the main entrance of City Hall, and then I'll show you the police department entrance here. So trying to get a little different identity between the two, but yet, you know, it's still part of the same city operations. So a couple of things. We have a little uh, sloped roof uh, kind of at the edge and some cornice work that's all EFIS. It's all part of the EFIS system, and we do have a couple of alternates in the bid just to make sure that you're making the decisions where you want to spend the money when we get the bids. Uh, so there's a, a couple of those things like the covered walkway, and you'll be able to identify those by price and then say, yes, we want that for that price, or no, we don't want that for that price. Uh, so coming down, again, that trying to get that neighborhood feel, yeah, it'll take a while for that tree to get that big, but we'll plant some decent trees. Uh, so coming down to the corner, this is the secure parking. We don't show the fence and gate here, just so that you can see kind of what the building looks like uh, from, from the looking to the uh, southwest. So coming around the corner now, looking through to the plaza, to the southeast, uh, this is the secure side. You know, this is that, that alternate cover wa uh, walkway. Uh, we're seeing through, there's an axis that goes all the way through. And if in real life we were standing here, 
we would see all the way down that axis through these markers into the park and just really trying to bring all of our city resources together to feel like it's cohesive, to, to, to give us the best opportunity for events. So it turns the corner here uh, from Ohio, comes up to City Hall, turns the corner, goes across to Sheffield Park, and we put some little baby plants here, but this is ultimately the botanical garden uh, that I think that the garden clubs and various, uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for the community to possibly get involved in, uh, planting and maintaining and changing, getting species of interest, all those kinds of things. Thank you. So, I uh, didn't want to give you all aerial views. This is kind of a snail's view of the entrance on the, on the east side. And it gives you a chance to just see, this is all the same material. Uh, you know, it's just articulated a little differently. It's an inexpensive way to give it a rustification. Uh, and I know a lot of people went through architecture school. You know what uh, rustification is. It's the building up. You know, it's the base, shaft, and capital, you know, of civic buildings and buildings of importance. And so that's what you're looking at there. And then looking back across from the entrance of City Hall to the old City Hall. And we haven't talked about this yet, and we're going to get to it uh, in just very shortly. But we wanted to have the expression of transparency because in this building is the commissioner's workroom, commissioner's shared office, and the mayor's office, and a conference room. So from elected officials to city staff, we wanted the community to know that there was transparency, that, that this commission is, has uh, made sure that going forward we have. So here's a view of the of the chamber. Uh, we have furniture packages yet to review with the city manager and staff, but these are the types of furniture. Uh, we haven't se uh, selected the, the fabric and the finishes yet, and some of the finishes in here we still have to get approved, uh, and they'll show up in the next renderings. But this is going into the city plaza lobby entrance, that's the control area, and we want to put historic photos down the, the lobby of Lynn Haven, of the city of Lynn Haven through here. There's some displays, pla uh, LED screens for events and, and announcements and, and things of that nature in the lobby. And just, it's very modest. Uh, it's not over the top, but it does give a place for people to, to be able to uh, congregate before they go into a chamber event. So in the chamber, uh, that's the commission uh, bench up front, and so we have monitors located throughout that tilt and swivel so that every person in the audience, and there's one back here, uh, will be able to see what's being presented without turning around or, or, or getting uncomfortable turning sideways. This is the back of the chamber. And the other thing we wanted was views to Sheffield Park. So when you look through here, you're gonna be able to see uh, the lovely park as it continues to evolve and see our, our community using those, those resources. And then all of these windows in the commission chamber uh, will have uh, sunshades that will automatically close on a preset presentation uh, mode. So the AV controls the shades. They can be controlled separately, but a one bu button, easy function, presentation, lights dim, shades come down, monitors come on. So pretty much anyone in the community can use, can use this facility. So going back to the old city hall, uh, this would be the, the old part that would be demolished uh, and the cost again to do that and rebuild it just was not 
conducive to the budget, but also conducive to the design. Because as you can see now, we didn't need that much square footage in the old city hall anyway uh, to have that elected separation from uh, staff. Uh, but this garden could be really something special for the community. Uh, the link between uh, the two entities, uh, the old and the new, and then put terraces in here. I mean, this could, I, I could see myself sitting in here, uh, you know, and enjoying the day, enjoying the morning, uh, that sort of thing. So this is the view uh, from the plaza southwest. Um, so we're starting to put in the rendered view a few more plants and be able to, to see on the outside of the botanical garden. But I really have high hopes for the internal side of that garden. Uh, I just I think that I think that it really could be special to Bay County. So when we're in the old city hall, uh, looking from the meeting space, uh, from the meeting space back across to the new city hall, you will get these kinds of views through that transparent element that we've added uh, from uh, the meetings, you know, from the second floor meeting spaces. When you come in, you can go upstairs to the uh, uh, mayor's office and the commissioner's office and these are all shared spaces because, as you know, in the Sunshine Law, we can we can only have one commissioner at a time, uh, unless it's a, a advertised meeting. So they can meet with their constituents on a scheduled basis, and it would be a very pleasant place uh, to hold those one-on-ones. So with that, I take any questions you may have. Uh, we're currently wrapping up budget information. Um, we, we do have that little bit of extra square footage for a little bit of growth, uh, but I'm confident that we are, I've showed this to a couple of out of town uh, construction manager types to review our schedule, which they said were a little, little light on schedule. They would like to see 20 months to build all this. Uh, we were trying to get it in 16. I said, can we do it in 18? They said, nah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that based on the type of construction and what they saw, uh, they, they felt confident that, that we're, gonna hit, we're gonna hit the budget. You're not gonna have any money left over, I can tell you that. I, uh, I just want to tell you, I, uh, very impressive presentation, and, and from my comments, uh, you, uh, you captured everything that I asked you to do, so I really I, I appreciate the work y'all put into it, and it's a very impressive building. Thank you, know, you sir. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I echo those sentiments as well. Um, the thing that stuck out to me probably the most, aside from you did hit every element that we've asked for. I, I appreciate and I, and I thank you and your team for the forethought into the small things like the transparency with the windows and the old with the new, um, with the with the replanting of these flowering, blooming plants, because I agree that's representative of regrowth, which is what we're going through here in the city. So this, those extra little touches like that, that, that really make things special, the small details, and I appreciate you guys working on that. I think it's a beautiful building. Thank you, sir. I have... Uh our main part of the team here, Marcus mm -hmm. Gensch and Antonio Desi, mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, they work very, very hard for, for all of us. Absolutely. And if I could ask a couple. Yeah, this is very informal. So okay, good. Yes, um, I, don't, I don't hate, I hate to say that I love everything. It looks great, it's gonna be beautiful, but I'm trying to be practical when I ask a couple questions. Yes, Number one, the windows. Uh, how, how, what type of windows are you putting in? How will they withstand the storm? It's a very good question. So what we have, in order to meet 200 miles per hour, mm -hmm. we have, uh, first of all, we have low E, impact, insulated, heavy duty commercial. Then on top of that, in order to meet the requirements, we have a security film. 
that goes on the other side of the glass so that any impact from large or small missile will be taken, including small arms fire, it will stop. So the glass will break, but it will not come out of the frames. Okay, and then um, again, coming from the practical side, where the kitchen, the EOC kitchen is located, um, going through the building, basically going to the back of the building and then out there, it, it will require at least two to four large dumpsters. Uh, where are they going to be? I didn't point that out in the site plan, but that's a very good question. So we have a dumpster enclosure. You can't see it, but it's on the corner there by the alley uh, in the parking area. So there's a, the required enclosure is back there uh, for, for actually all the city area uh, trip, uh, refuge. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to ask too refuge. about uh, obviously, and I had not thought about this until I'm thinking of hauling garbage. And I'm talking 50 pound bags can break of sugar and flour, and they're going to be coming right through the police department. It's, going to be filled with all air. it's what? Right, so you're going to be tracking carts through, through the halls and all of that, which made me think of this. It, this is all going to require a huge janitorial staff that will have to work all day. Um, I mean, if we had a, a disaster like we had before, they have to be there constantly. You've got hundreds of people in there using the bathrooms and all of that type of thing. Um, if, if when you come right down to the final, if there's any place that you can locate that dumpster um, closer to where the food trucks are going to load and unload and to where the people who are cooking for 300 people have to take the trash out. And that's a non-ending job. You know, that goes on forever and ever. So I'm just, I'm just thinking about that. And the fact that it's on the second floor. Um, anyway, that's my thought on the kitchen. Those windows up there in the front they're going to be secure, so if they're, I mean, nobody has to worry about that. Um, and then my other question is, in the old, uh, the old city hall, second floor, is there going to be an elevator there so that people can get up? Because most of the people that I meet with are 80 or Actually, older. we could put an elevator there. These elevators, what we are currently using because of the water table is so high, we're using a shaftless, machine roomless elevator, which means we don't have pistons with oil contaminating the ground. Mm -hmm. We have controllers that are built into the side of that elevator. But these elevators are about $70,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, we did not put one in the old city hall because of budget, mm -hmm. but uh, we still meet ADA throughout the new building and in the old building because uh, the meeting spaces that we have in the office that we have on the ground floor will accept anybody, mm -hmm. so our meeting will occur there. Yeah, that was my next question. Um, would anything downstairs be appropriate to meet people, elderly people, or people with in a wheelchair or anything like that? Yes, ma'am. The ground floor will be ADA accessible. Okay. So and any kind of office situation? There's an office and Just, a meeting space. So that takes care of that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you did ask a question I wanted to go back to, and now I'm trying to... What was the other question I didn't answer? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, I was just talking about coming through the oh. hallway. I've seen garbage. Okay, um, yeah, we were talking it about goes everywhere. garbage. <laughs> so one thing we tried to do to eliminate some of the paper, you know, when you have a lot of activity in a building, Mm -hmm. uh, to eliminate some of the paper products and be more ecologically conscious. Mm -hmm. uh, our uh, water, f water fixtures in the, in the public bathrooms, mm -hmm. these fixtures are uh, soap, wash, and air dry. Mm -hmm. So you never leave your hands underneath that spigot. That way you're not dripping water. You're not piling up paper mm -hmm. towel trash. It's all right there. It's sanitary. Uh, and we've been using that on several buildings, and it, it's been mm -hmm. a big success. 
Are those located on the second floor where you'll have the EOC kitchen? Uh, what you're talking about, where floor. is the closest bathroom to the EOC kitchen where the people, actually you'll only be, have, how many will it seat? Maybe 50? There? Where's the nearest restroom? So these are, these are restrooms, these are restrooms, these are kitchen staff. So the health department makes us put one right off the kitchen, but not to where you have an open door into the production area. Mm -hmm. So if you're in here eating, you would go right there. If you're in here cooking, you would go right there. Mm -hmm. And Antonio just pointed out, we could put a trash chute. I don't like them because they're nasty. They get nasty. Yeah. nasty. But we could nasty. put trash chutes in the workroom, break room, mm -hmm. you know, if we want to make it easier to get it down to the first floor. Yeah, but then, yeah, that I agree with you, they're nasty. Yeah. Then somebody has to clean them out, shovel out all the trash. Um, yeah. And how many will the dining room seat? Maybe 50? Uh, there's, there's room in there for more, but mm -hmm. um, uh, 48, 50, there's 50 seats in here right now. So this is not a restaurant to order cooking. Right. But we've worked this out so that you could do events, you could do special events, mm -hmm. and you could plate up, you mm -hmm. know, individually, either either banquet style on the kitchen side and mm -hmm. serve through the window. Uh, but when it's not in full operation, they could still make coffee and tea and put it out in dispensers in these two areas. Mm -hmm. okay. Again, the, the, the kitchen's uh, primary use is, is yeah. during the event of a disaster. So I'm not right. sure a, a proper use of space would be to allocate a utility corridor or something like that that stays empty, hopefully, forever. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah. just, just my opinion. I mean, yeah. you build what you have to build, but, but hopefully we never have to use it. And most of the people, when they're... Uh, they're there, and you have a thousand people in that building. After you know, immediately after, they're sitting in the halls eating but their food because the I mean, trash. they just carry it back to where they're going to go, and then yeah, then you have to have somebody go through and put the trash out. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Any questions from the audience? Chief, do you have any? Of course, we One more for you. Is there going to be anything coming out of the uh, one of them decorative things? Uh, things that come out of the pond, the retention pond, or is it just going to be just water over there? I we would like to, to yes, sir. Uh, so we definitely want to put one in at the corner of 9th and Ohio mm -hmm. uh, because that pond, when the library goes away there, you know, that's just that gateway feature. We, we need right. it there. Right. And we're hoping to be able to afford it to put it in the other retention pond because it's not just an aesthetic element. It's a water yeah, it's quality feature as well yep. so sure. we're, we're we're planning on it okay. it may be an alternate all right perfect thank you <laughs> before we uh, move on to the next presentation does the yeah i'm sorry a question ahead. um the layout that you have there with the garden and this there's a lot of space but your your secured parking is there and the only public parking you have is right here where this vacant field is behind us here uh, how many parking spaces do you entail that being right there in that little corner there where it's a well, public parking? Just, just for clarification, you'll also have this parking lot out here too. Sure. Yeah. And you got a long, got a long way to go down that way to get yeah. here. Right. But so we think that I, if memory serves, there's about 50 spaces here. Okay. And then when all this gets done, there'll be over probably 80 here. And then we left the pond set back and everything set back here for overflow parking along Pennsylvania. Another 30 here. And then we have just a couple quick in and out, maybe you know, 15 minute or 30 minute spaces, parallel parking here. I was just wondering, back here, I assume this is where all the office help is going to park and everything behind the building along with the police department and their personal vehicles and the squad cars is that correct so we kind of ran out of real estate but this mm -hmm. is actually the secure parking uh for for police 
So okay. not all the squad cars will be in there because we have three shifts. Mm -hmm. So two of the shifts, I think there's 25 at a time. And are they, the, the trees there and the grass, is that an option to create more parking where you have the grass area? Okay. That we don't own this, and we don't own this. <laughs> okay. There'll be room to park. No. But maybe eventually. Thank you again. Um, before you step away and we move on to the next presentation, um, is there any particular items that the commission sees that we need to give direction to the architects, or y'all? consistently agreeable with what's going on and can and they continue to move forward with their design? Um, I question, uh, you had said at one point you wanted the park gated so there was no entrance to the, the park uh, for the 77 sign. Well, what we did was when we lose the library, by water. Yeah. We're, we're expanding the water to the edge because what happens during events, they'll park in the the grocery store parking lot, and they're just running across here. But if they know they can't get through, they'll cross at the crosswalks, and then this gate where the bridge is could either be, you can decide whether to leave that gate open or to leave that gate closed so that people use a safe means to cross Highway 77. That Plus was we, the idea. We oh, also all know that the Silver Knight will not guard a city without a moat. So, <laughs> well, I, I, I like I like the the <laughs> use of natural resources as a barrier instead of having to put a fence up. So mm -hmm. it, it's aesthetically pleasing, and you don't end up with an ugly fence. Up. That was a so. that was the chief's idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So are we in consensus to? allow them to move forward or, or is there any any issues that the commission sees that needs to be stopped and corrected uh, i'm an i mayor pro tem so i think oh, that's good yeah um you know we don't get to vote on anything in the no, workshop but it, but we do need to give them some general ideas that they're that they're going in the right direction mm -hmm. I, and again i think that all looks great too my only concern is that eoc kitchen because if you ever have to use it at, are there any stairs there should it, should it happen that all the power is lost? I realize there's two generators, but there's always that what if. I mean, how many sets of stairs are on the second floor? I mean, going up to the second floor. There's one on each end of the building. So there's two. Two flights of stairs. Two stairs. Two stairs. Chief is behind you. Miss Tinder, there, like at Sutherland, everybody pitched in, and when you're concerned about mm -hmm. cleaning, running food. Right. Everybody work together to do that. And like I'm with Commissioner Russell, I pray we never have to use it. Right. But if we do, I assure you there's plenty of soldiers around to get that done. <laughs> That's not a concern of mine, the cleanliness, getting the food up and down, right. any of that. I mean, as Mr. Kidwell just told me, he said it was like a well-oiled machine underneath a tent at Sutherland. Um, Floor architect, Antonio and uh, Joe and Mark. Um, all of them, and I also like to thank staff. We we put a lot of time into it, looking at a lot of stuff, trying to make sure we hear everything that the commission is saying, um, what the public has said to us. Those initial workshops back in 2020 were very very helpful to us, and so we hope that we have captured a lot of those things that the public has asked us to do, while being very very conservative with the the city dollars. And and I have to, to they, they kind of know the story with, with Joe and I. Anytime somebody makes suggestions, Joe, Joe and I, our response is, that's not in the budget. Um, but, but, and we are serious about try, trying to stay with them what you've, you've told us to do. And uh, thank you, Commission, for allowing us to move forward. Our next presentation will come from um, DAC Architects, and that consists of the ball fields and uh, the sports complex. While they're getting ready, make sure, can we make sure that we speak into the mic, folks that are listening at home, 
were saying they can't hear, so make sure you speak into the mics. Good evening, I'm uh, Chris Forehand with Panhandle Engineering. Um, Chris, before you get started, is that the same as this? Yes, it is. Okay, you're going so to see, see four different plans. Okay. Uh, the first one should be your first page, so they should be in order. Okay, thank uh, you. I, just, I didn't know if I needed to move over there. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so the, uh, the first plan that, that we're looking at is the overall phasing plan for the entire sports park. Um, as you know, we've, we've been working diligently on phase one, which includes those uh, five mm -hmm. baseball fields. <laughs> Operator error. Okay, so um, the, as I said, this is the overall site plan uh, that shows all of the five baseball fields. And around those baseball fields, uh, you do have uh, the batting cages, as you can see those, those little locations there. Uh, we've got sidewalks that connect all the way around the baseball uh, fields on the outside, and then we've got a big uh, courtyard area in between. It's really similar to, to Kane Griffin. Uh, have bleachers that go all around uh, all of the fields. Um, we've got a pavilion there that um, will service if somebody wants to have an event. It's got some picnic tables underneath it. And then each one of the bleachers has a sales structure that goes over each one of those, those bleachers. Uh, so that would give them, give them shade. You know, this area is a lot bigger than the one at Kane, so it was, it was going to be a lot more expensive to cover the whole entire area. However, we do have a net system that does uh, cover most of the area, but does stop short of the new concession stand. Um, we also have some alternative uh, parking that we're going to put include into the bid. Uh, th these, this is that area over to the east that folks already park. Uh, we're just going to improve that and then include a place for folks to turn around along with that phase one. Uh, something else that we've added is the existing tennis courts. Um, we're going to turn those into outdoor basketball courts and just include that as an alternate in phase one since it's, you know, shouldn't be an, uh, an expensive uh, part of the project. Um, just to talk about some of the other phases that I'll get a little bit more in depth with here in a minute. but. You've got the, the sports complex, and you can kind of see how um, it would, you know, kind of go along with the ball fields. Uh, you can see all the additional parking. And then along with, with that phase of the sportsplex would be all of the parking that you see from, from the existing parking here. Because all in front there in the front of the new complex, uh, this is a stormwater pond. This is some additional parking that we're going to add. And then it would stop right about that location there that, that in, that we call phase four. Um, so those are all the improvements that would go along with that. And then uh, for phase, what we're calling phase three is basically down by the, uh, the animal shelter uh, where we pick up and extend that existing road all the way down uh, to the facilities. Um, uh, that's where uh, Joe and Ty would be located and they would have all their equipment. Uh, they've got a little uh, a storage yard there and so then that would, you see the, the break line there, that would stop for phase four. And then phase four would be the three football, soccer, lacrosse fields, uh, the uh, future concession stand. I don't think that's kind of been put in stone yet. Uh, and then the additional parking, which would also connect the whole entire park where you could go all the way around. And then it would have this additional uh, parking area here. That which you would really need that parking to accommodate these uh, the ball fields. Go to the next slide, please. That's the, that's the overall. It should be phase one. Yeah, so at the very bottom. If you click on the very bottom, very bottom file. Yep. Okay. Well, so 
we're generating. Okay, go ahead and let's go click on phase two. Okay, so what this is, this is a, um, this is zoomed in on what we call phase one. Uh, just gives you a little better perspective of everything we've, we've got going on there. Uh, what I, I did mention earlier, but we do have uh, two playgrounds. There, one is a smaller toddler playground and then another one's for the, for the larger kids. Those would be very similar to the ones that we put down at, uh, at Porter Park. And then we've also got another uh, playground area uh, that is located up on the northeast east corner. Um, we do have, these are the batting cages and we do have some park benches where folks can sit there and watch the kids do uh, batting practice, practice in, in uh, pitching. And then of course we do have new uh, Musco lights, you know, all LED lights for the fields. Uh, we will have security lights to go all the way around all of the fields. Uh, they line all of the parking areas. You can actually see them, see them there. That's, that would be the security lights that line the, uh, the sidewalks. Um, so is there any questions on phase one? I only have one question. I want to do my due diligence. I had a Lynn Haven resident, he, Wyatt, he's 11, and he said, would you please go to the meeting and ask them if we can put in an ice skating rink? <laughs> so okay. I've done my due diligence. Thank you. <laughs> sir, sir? Here you go. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah. And, yes, and so uh, as I said, this, this phase one, we are about 95%. Uh, I'm waiting on some, some uh, landscape and irrigation plans uh, for that design. And when I get that, uh, I hope to be getting everything to the city for one last final review so we can get it out to bid and get this thing constructed uh, before it gets cold so we can get the sod down and uh, you know, sometimes September, October this of this year. So we can be ready for it. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's my objective too, so. Um, and then, it, you know, we, we, we also, I didn't mention it earlier, but on the overall plan, we did incorporate an area for a future skate park. And what we did is we, we got with Panama City and got their uh, design of the one that they just constructed down by City Hall. We just put it in here to see what kind of area it took. So that's what that is. I think they spent around a quarter of a million dollars on, on there. So, so as, so as, yes. So as we get to the, through all of these phases, you know, depending on what the costs are, if you guys decide you want to, you want to do that, that's, we're ready to do it. So. Can that be iced? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how to decide on ice skate park. One, one question, Chris. Yes, um, and so with that said, um, having maybe having the site down by September, October. September, October, yes, ma'am. Um, could um, we play ball in, in the spring. spring of 20... In the spring 20, 2022. 2022. Yes. Yes. It would be cheaper to buy him a bus ticket to go to Pensacola than it would be to put ice in, at our rink. Yeah. <laughs> They're destined. They have one in Dustin. I love that. Okay, this next slide, this is the sports complex, uh, sportsplex, I think is what they're calling it. Uh, Doug's going to talk a little bit about the building structure here in a minute, but this just shows you the site layout, and you can sh see the, the dark shade of gray. This would be all of the associated parking with the facility. As I said earlier, this is the pond. Um, this is the area for the future community center, so we would make all the provisions for stormwater and for water and sewer taps to be able to just connect 
you know, right to those and be able to construct that facility. Uh, all of the parking would be enough um, to accommodate that future community, community center, but it would have to include that larger parking in phase four. So that's something we would have to think about as, as we go along. Uh, you can see how we kind of reconfigure this parking area. Uh, really didn't flow too well, so we kind of um, put it together where you could go either direction, you could park on an angle, and then it's just kind of a smoother process rather than now, I think you go around around this lift station and it's only one way, so it's a little bit confusing. Um, any questions about this one for, ju for just the site? I'm thinking it's a retention pond. Chris, real quick before we move on to the next item. Um, the blue area in front of the proposed building, is that a retention pond, it's reflection pond? Stormwater pond. Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, this is the, the, the third phase, the facilities phase. Um, and I think Dag may, they're going to talk a little bit about this building. Uh, but it's pretty simple. It's, you know, it's got the open bays there, so we've got access where the guys can um, come through a gate, uh, come through, and they can pull their trucks with their trailers, with all their equipment, mowers and things, and pull them inside so that they're secure, and then they have some office space there. And then this area here would be fenced in so that they can store all of their equipment, uh, mowers, tractors, and things that, uh, that they use. And then this is the stormwater pond that's required uh, for this facility. So, any questions on this? No, I'm glad Joe's getting his place, though. Yeah, I, th I think they really need it. I think he's, and work I think he's working out of his truck. I think they're both working out of their trucks. Okay. Think, I was thinking it was somewhere, somewhere here going straight over. No, it was straight out. It was straight out this way. No, the transmitter would go we, that way. Transmitter's over here, though. Yeah, right. transmitter would go that way. It went out to the station zone car. So it came here and then went that way. Yes. Huh, okay. Well, I'll look at that because I know we had a we had an alignment for that when we did a concept right. plan. So, but I'll look at that. Yeah, we don't want to mess that up if we can get an exit that way. Any other questions? I got a question about the ball fields. How how many feet are they again? Three hundred feet. And and who could play on those? High school can't play on those, right? I guess it would be um, it'd be eleven through fifteen, roughly. Is that about right, Dan? Yeah. If high school played on it, we'd have a home run derby going on. Yeah. They do, but yeah. they do tournaments too. They bring them in. But, but, but we had, we had talked about that in the past, and there was some discussion that we didn't want we didn't want this to to look like we were trying to rent it out to the high schools and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's why we ended up going. Plus, we had a restriction in size. We couldn't get 350 for each of these fields without blowing it out, and there wasn't room for it. Correct. Yes. Which I would have, lo I would have loved to have been able to support Mosley, but I mean, you know, you, right. we have to build what we can afford and what we can, you know, um, accommodate. Well, you know, North Bay Haven does have a new ball field now. Right. So, which before they didn't, they nice utilized years of cane. Right, right. I thought maybe you could do two of them. Okay. And is that the only is that the only bathroom in the center there for the for the for the uh, for the playgrounds? they got to walk all the way to the... It is. It's the only restrooms for the five ball fields. And then when mm -hmm. you add the uh, three football soccer fields, there would, there's a plan for a... Well, there's an existing concession stand that's there with the restrooms to the south. So... Uh, okay. You know, there is an existing restroom on the north 
east corner of this property, and you actually see it on there. Are we taking that out, or are we leaving that there? It huh? was in such bad shape. We, we're going to okay. I, I didn't know. That's why I was asking. And the, and the other thing, too, in the uh, Dag will talk about this, but in their um, sports flex gymnasium, they have an external restroom facility right. on the northeast, or excuse me, southeast <laughs> corner that you could access. Mm -hmm. Southeast or southwest? Southeast. Oh, is it? Okay. I'm, I'm yeah, So the, the, the walking uh, sidewalk that goes around the back of the fields, you could walk right in and use okay. that restroom. Okay. That's good. So just to make sure I understand what uh, Pat just asked, there, there's one restroom in the center? Yes, ma'am. And then there's one down here between there's the soccer fields? There's an existing one down there, and, and that building okay. needs to be demolished. Oh. So once you get into phase four, uh, which is the rest of the ball fields, the, mm -hmm. the football fields, then you would have to make a decision whether or not you wanted to build those restrooms and concession stand. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's been a final decision on that yet. This is just phase one, of, correct? Yes, yes. And, and phase one is the only thing that we're bidding out. And I think once you, once that gets done with the, the building, then you guys have to decide when you want to bid, bid that phase out. Yes. Okay. Any questions for Chris? Everything look good? Chris? Okay. You know how I feel about sports. So I, I, you know, yep, this, is, this, me is, too. this is close to my heart, so I appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Okay. Next we have John Lane. He's coming with Dak, and he's going to give us some updates on the sports complex. Hey, good evening. Well, there isn't uh, much new in terms of design content uh, to present this time that varies from last time we presented. Uh, because, uh, as I recall, last time we had well underway with the construction documents portion of it, and we are now finalizing the 100% construction documents in fact, consultants will have that to us tomorrow, and we'll take probably the next couple of days, Monday, Tuesday, to review it and coordinate and, uh, and deliver a 100% uh, bid set, permit set, by, by next week and a week. So just to recap, just uh, in case some of the people who did not attend the last meeting I'll quickly do a general overview of the, of the building. It's a pre-engineered metal building. It's about uh, 27,000 square feet uh, to include basketball, pickleball, and volleyball um, facilities. We uh, per, uh, armored the building uh, perimeter-wise with a, 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 uh, a split-face wall just uh, to protect it, also to have some visual architectural interest. Um, this is the main entry on the north side. Uh, we have storefront on both the north and uh, east and west side, um, um, 10 feet high, so it's uh, to, uh, you know, you have a nice visual connectivity to the inside and outside, to convey, so to convey a sense of motion and activity in the complex. Um, up towards the top portion, well, we have a uh, cow wall system, which is a translucent panel wall system um, that has about a 40% uh, trans, uh, transparency. Uh, so we, we don't get the, um, uh, the solar gain uh, from the outside. Um, on axis, looking east, we have the ballparks, and on that side of the building, we have a uh, 12-foot high. Um, uh, if somebody could bring this up here, we'll sure. we could show you. We have 12-foot uh, high uh, storefronts, so you have the nice connection to the ball fields from uh, the courts. This is the concourse area, so uh, coming in from the north, you'll be able to hang left and go straight into the uh, basketball courts. We have here will be our uh, restrooms. And on this side, we, it was a new, uh, recently added program where we're adding for Boys and Girls Club a, a computer room so, uh, for after school. 
and we have additional bathrooms that have been added since uh, probably the last meeting, um, so could be accessed off hours by people in the uh, uh, baseball fields. So you wouldn't have to have to come to the main building when the main building is closed. You'll be able to access these uh, exterior restrooms. <laughs> That's about the gist of it. Um, the, as far as the architectural interest of the architecture, again, it's a pre-engineered metal building. Um, we've added some architectural interest through how we've oriented the metal siding, um, the color, the texture, uh, the orientation, and also the play in, uh, in the elevations and the push and pull of the facade. Um, we've added also along this portion over here, we've had ample storefront one, two, three areas. These are 10 foot high storefronts with uh, um, a louvered canopy system. Again, that adds quite a bit of a, you know, visual interest, architectural interest to the building, so it does not look like a metal building. And what phase is this in? This phase this two. Two? Yeah. This, this uh, plan depicts uh, the future phase, uh, which is the banquet facility. We just had, uh, wanted to show you just to show the uh, connection and the access to the ballpark. Um, we'll be able to come in here, either hang left or right. But we also wanted to maintain sort of a green corridor straight to the ballpark. So you'll have that, that connection. Again, this is the facade. This is the uh, north facade where we'll have the signage, uh, um, large Lynn Haven Sports Complex signage. Here we have the storefront coming in, the main entry. Again, we have the, the metal canopy. And this portion right here is actually a recessed in the building, so it's not along the same plane. So you'll have that uh, you know, sense of uh, entry. This will be on the, the south side, and this is where we have our uh, sort of a mechanical yard, additional uh, exterior bathroom, and we are looking at this portion, which will be the aerobics uh, center right here. This is the, uh, the outside of it. And again, this will be the other entry that would connect. Once we do the, the additional phase with the uh, banquet facility, this will be on access from the banquet facility entry. Looking east towards uh, the ball uh, fields, here again uh, is the, uh, the storefront. These are 12 foot high storefronts. Um, we have service uh, um, overhead doors. We envision that uh, you know on nice days to be re to remain open. Um, this is on the opposite side, obviously, and uh, again we have really tall storefronts, and these will be uh, over the storefronts will be the uh, louvered canopy system that that uh, a metal canopy system, post supported. Concession building, um, existing concession building, uh, the two-story one, we are chopping the top floor off and raising the sides because right now it looks a bit squatty. Um, we're going to probably raise it by another three feet, three to four feet with a heel truss and uh, go ahead and uh, re-roof it. We will, uh, the portions that we make up with the heel truss, we we'll probably will we'll change the material there just to tie to the, uh, um, the main building. We'll, we'll do a metal siding um, on all sides. Uh, we'll tie it both in terms of, uh, of material, metal siding, and also of color to add some visual interest. We have a uh, aluminum canopy. Um, that'll be a perimeter canopy. We'll maintain the same uh, grid, the same column spacing. We'll just uh, re-roof it. Michael, do you want to add anything? Um, yeah, just as a reminder, with 
the concession stand building and the, the budget that we were given, we are providing a set of documents to the city and the city will act as the general contractor for this concession stand building and will also act as the general contractor for the maintenance building. Yes, sir. So. Yes, sir. What is your anticipated design wind load for these buildings? Just, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. I know we're, we're hard in the city hall, but I'm just curious, what are we designing these buildings to, what wind load are we designing to, to withstand? For the sportsplex building per code today, I believe is 135 miles an hour. Even with that big window in the front? Yeah. Yes. If I may ask a question um, about the banquet room, you can tell I go to the same place every time. That, that banquet room there, is there going to be a kitchen in the back of that? Yes, there is. Okay, I'll, and I'll actually point it out to you right now. That's not even in our phasing plans right now, right? Mm -mm. Right. Right. Okay. Right over here. It's actually, it's a commercial kitchen. Is that in the back, I assume, the rear of the building? Yes, that will be the side. There will be a service, uh, uh, service road to the parking back here so this will be you can see the exterior doors for you mm -hmm. to come in so the zero interactions mm -hmm. with the main building so. thank you and just to piggyback off of that um, no it's not in our, our our phase but what we're waiting on is the grant from CDBGR to see if we will qualify for that and uh, we thought it would be very prudent to go on and just put that in our plans now and uh, one if we get approved for that then we can surely try to move forward with this one so, I'm very impressed that and and this is what I heard you say so please correct me if I'm wrong um, I'm really impressed that all of this rebuild that we're going to do City Hall the parks everything that we're doing you are saying that we have the money when we build it so when we're done with the park, it's going to be totally paid for. When we're done with City Hall, it's going to be totally paid for. That is amazing. Yes. We will not build anything we can't afford. And so we look at the money that we have in now, the money we anticipate getting in, the money that is set aside or obligated through FEMA, and that is the money we're using. If we get to a point where costs go up, then we will come back to this commission and say we will have to change something, do something at this point. Um, but I, I, I do, again, I thank commission because you guys are the ones that you know, took the cost down and said give me something within this range. Um, of what we have, and that's that's what we're working with. Along with, we know what's going to be coming in from FEMA, what's been designated in those um, with those buildings in that areas. We know we're not finished with insurance. They're working hard to get those final numbers for us. So we are in a good place, and it's just been um, through the help of everyone that we feel like when we're finished, we will not owe money for buildings or parts. And, and we're going to um, keep the integrity groups feet to the fire on the CBD, CBDGR. That is correct. I got a, one, one more quick question. So, uh, any questions? Uh, yes. Both um, for DAG and Florida Architects. Um, for uh, There's a lot of interior furniture and whatnot that needs to go in on the, on the build. Are we... Are we um, uh, are both these uh, architect companies looking at using local companies for these uh, for these purchases? I know we're looking for the best price possible, but are are we not going to source it out and try to use uh, some you know uh, Lynn Haven or local companies versus versus uh, going outside? I think we just from talking to Florida Architect and we work with them. Um, we are going to go with the most cost-effective company. Some of those are on state contracts. Um, state contract means when it's already when it's state contract, it's already bid it out, and the only thing we have to do is access that vendor, and that means that the state has given us the best price on some of those. Um, so we will look at all options. Nothing is is off the table, but we surely want to be again uh, conservative with whatever we spend on furniture.
Anything else from the commission? Okay. The public have any questions? I think this was a, a, a very informative and productive meeting. I want to thank all of y'all for coming out. Do you uh, still have Mike McDonald? Oh. Lord, I'm, I'm, listen, it's, it's, it's dinner time. I apologize. <laughs> I was going, what is he doing? It's probably a good thing that you're hungry and ready to get out of here because you know we've we've just gotten started. We're we're about a week in, but we have uh, you know made some good progress. So we want to kind of show you where we were. Uh, we got the three different projects going with you. We've got the restoration of of your uh, fire station, uh, and then the restoration of the public works building, along with the addition of a couple of components to that, which we'll show you. Uh, and then we're just in the very, very early throes of, of beginning to work on the uh, Library Media Center. And so we'll, we'll kind of talk with you a little bit about that uh, process. You've obviously already gone through that with, with a couple of uh, uh, key facilities, but uh, we'll show you kind of what we'll be planning on doing with you and, uh, and then we'll get busy with it. Thank you. And, and I was, by the way, joking, you take as much time <laughs> as you need. No, that's fine. As I mentioned, I'm Bill Perry. I run our office here locally in Panama City, and uh, Kale Madness is getting us set up over here. Kale's in the office with me there. While he's handing that out, uh, you know, one of the first things that we had to do was was uh, create plans of your your facilities as they currently exist, and so we've been working on that. Uh, fortunately, we were able to recover from the city plans for the fire station, but there were no plans, you know, that we could get our hands on for uh, the public works facility. So we kind of started from scratch on that, and and. Uh, got that started so while while Kale's trying to get some of that together if if you want to we'll just uh Kale, are you, are you starting with the uh, fire station? Okay, so just looking at the, the plans that you have there of fire station number one, uh, the, the plans that you have there, the first plan, first sheet there is, is essentially the floor plan of your existing facility. And uh, as you uh, recollect, there was a substantial amount of damage to the uh, uh, high bay, what I call a high bay area where all of your trucks are, are built. And our, our work is concentrated on restoring that. Uh, and so uh, that, that just shows uh, what you have there on, on D1.0. If you go over to D2.0, uh, that basically shows the elevations uh, of the building. Uh, and in your high bays, you have uh, uh, four truck bays that have uh, 14 foot, uh, on, that's on the D2.0, uh, four 14 foot by wide by 14 foot high doors in that, uh, uh, some walk doors and, and that type of thing. We've got some, some photos, if we can get this thing uh, working, that we can show you some of the damages that are there. Uh, but if you look at the south elevation on the D2.0 
drawing. That's uh, this, this building is, is uh, a pre-engineered metal building type draw, uh, building and that south wall was, was pretty well damaged. Uh, so uh, let me see if I can get to, yeah, okay. So uh, just to kind of walk through some of the damages, uh, this end wall here was damaged quite a bit. Uh, this area right in here was totally blown out. Uh, girts were, were totally disfigured and so forth. And uh, so we'll have to work on, on repairing that. Uh, all along the base of the walls here on both sides, you have uh, your metal panels go all the way to the floor and you have a liner panel or an interior panel that's, that's uh, on the inside of the building uh, that all go down to the floor and, and when your uh, uh, fire trucks are being washed and, and uh, sometimes there's a solution with that. It's, it's caused some real problems with corrosion uh, on the base of those panels. So one of the things that we'll be doing uh, as a part of this work is adding an eight inch curb uh, that will go around the full perimeter of this area right here such that uh, when we put back the new uh, panels on both the exterior of the building and the interior of the building, they will rest on top of that eight inch curb such that you won't have that issue anymore with, with wash down uh, water. So that'll protect your panels and give you better longevity. Uh, at, at the main uh, column locations, uh, we'll encase those columns because they're, they're anchored to the existing foundations of, uh, you know, rather than, than going to the expense of trying to cut those off and raise them up, uh, we can uh, step that uh, curb out and encase that column and, and protect it. So that's the way we'll be approaching that. Uh, Kelly, you want to go to the uh, D2.0 drawing? Next drawing. So essentially our work area is, is to rework this entire area on, on uh, the high bay area. Uh, we will be removing uh, and reviewing it. Uh, all of your doors experienced a certain amount. Uh, some of them total failure, some of them uh, the jams and tracking got disfigured, but uh, at the end of the day you need all your girts, uh, all your panels removed, all your girts removed and what we call the secondary components of the building uh, totally replaced. So essentially what we'll do is we'll break that building back down to the main frames. Uh, we'll salvage uh, your concrete, your footers, all of your main framing, and we'll replace all of the secondary girts and purlins that are damaged. Didn't have a tremendous amount of damage with the purlins except for in the end bay. Uh, but most of your girt sections that are in your walls were damaged, so all of that will be uh, removed and replaced. Uh, and then we'll go back in with, with new, new paneling, uh, and as I mentioned, mounted on top of, of those curves such that we protect that uh, with the go forward. Uh, interior to the building and discussions with T Chief Delange, uh, they currently have a couple of space heaters uh, one on, on uh, either end of the building. I don't know if we have interior shot or go back to the floor plan. Either one, uh, Kale will work. And, uh, so uh, in this area, about right in here and right in here, we got a couple of uh, gas uh, radiant uh, heat heaters. Uh, Chief Delange would like to see us maybe go to a four heater system in the corners, but that may be problematic with, with the roll back doors. Right now we're using uh, drum roll up doors in the building, uh, but he would really like to go to the sectional doors. So we'll have to take a look at that. And I don't know if you've been around to some of the uh, new fancier uh, service stations now, but you see in a lot of these bays, you see these huge fans and I won't call out the name of the fan, but they're big fans. <laughs> the manufacturer of that fan is, is actually uh, quite uniquely named, but uh, we have used those. We just uh, recently put some in uh, work bays uh, out at the uh, Mosquito Control Center for Panama City Beach, but he would like to see some of big fans incorporated, so we're looking at that. Uh, he wants to look at uh, uh, reevaluating with LED lights in this area and look at the spacing of that. So we'll do 
uh, a light model on that to make sure. Right now he says it's, there's a lot of shadows when his, when his trucks are in there, so we want to look at placement and so forth. So uh, that will be done. Uh, also looking at, and we'll put this in, the base bid will be bid with uh, regular vinyl insulation, which is what you have in there, but we'll have an additive alternate to go to the uh, spray-on insulation. And uh, that's what, what would be preferred and, and what we'll do uh, funding uh, allowed. Okay. I don't know if you have a few pictures, Kale, of, of some of the damage that we might could show. Just to kind of give them a, there, there's that corner I was telling you about. You can see the, the sheets totally uh, detached there. All of these girts are, are literally uh, buckled and, and destroyed. Uh, looked at the idea of, of uh, trying to salvage some of that in wall, but I think uh, that uh, the, the more prudent thing to do would be to replace uh, that entire end frame. Uh, and so we're looking at, at doing that as a part of the work. Uh, some of the other, the, the one really bad column at the base, uh, if we can find that uh, back on the other end, let's see if we, up here. Uh, yeah, some of these I think show. Yeah, so this column right here, this is, this is on the west side of the facility uh, and that column right there is literally almost rusted through at the anchor bolt place and plate and the uh, jam at, at that point there for that door is rusted through. Uh, that's on the west side in the first bay end. Uh, we will be specifying that, that column to actually be replaced. Uh, we'll get them to come in and, and uh, uh, pick this beam and hold it while we actually replace that. Uh, looked at the idea of maybe just uh, putting a built-up uh, section in there, but I think at the end of the day, the, the, the easier thing to do is going to be to replace that column, so we'll do that. Chief Delange, at the, at the moment, over here, that's the liner panel up to this point right here, and uh, so to help us out, they're going to actually remove these panels all the way around the building so that we can look at the bases of all of the columns and make sure that there aren't any others that, that need to be addressed. Uh, we could put an allowance in there for, I don't think there's any that has this condition with the exception of this one, thank goodness, but uh, for the others, if there are some that need some attention, it'll give us the opportunity to uh, build in the repairs for that and bid it that way so that we get good competitive bidding on it. Okay. Uh, Probably a good stopping point with this. We, we have got uh, uh, all of the plans created now for this facility. We will go in and define what the demolition requirements are. Uh, we'll go in and, and create the details for how we're going to handle, uh, might be running out of juice here, but uh, the, the concrete curbing and the details of the panel tie-ins and everything, we'll go in and add those details. Uh, but it is something that I think we can get to bid pretty quick, and I think it's something that's really needed. Uh, I know from the chief's perspective, you know, it's been a tough, tough past three or four months having to deal with, with uh, that thing not being closed up during the winter months. And uh, so although we're not going to beat the, the winter, we can get it done really quick, and, and so we're focused on getting this one ready to go to bid. Okay, let's move to the next facility. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a work in progress, but uh, this is over at the Public Works facility. And uh, as I mentioned, we did not have uh, any drawings for this, so we've kind of had to, to go field measure and, and get things going. But uh, essentially your, your uh, uh, base building there of Public Works is, is a five bay building. It's 50 feet wide by 100 feet long with 20 foot bays. Uh, you have, uh, and I don't know what I did, I guess the battery is about dead on it, but uh, the big truck bays are uh, 14 by 14, just like over at, uh, at the fire station, and then you have a 10 by 12 on the south side there, just to the east of those two work bays. Uh, 
So what we're doing to this facility is we're totally re-skinning uh, uh, the roof and exterior of the building. We're replacing all of the uh, big doors. Uh, there's, only, there's only one door that's uh, actually functioning in any, any capacity. Uh, they can get them closed. Uh, one of the gentlemen that works in the, in the bay the other day said he had one that was, was hung about halfway up and was describing how he was jumping and hanging on it to try to get it to, to come on down and close. So obviously th there's some things that need to be done. Uh, but the building held up fairly well. We're not doing anything in the area where your public works offices are. We're just reskinning. Uh, and, and replacing all of your work bay. We are replacing all of the uh, walk doors throughout uh, the facility, and, and of course everything will have to be reflashed as a part of, of uh, reskinning it. Uh, we're also going to have the alternate in there for the spray-in insulations for this facility as well. Uh, on the uh, if you could show the floor plan, Kale, on the north side of the facility, uh, you had an add-on uh, that, that you see up there on the top side, up where you see the grid, uh, grid line A, uh, over to your left, Kale. Uh, this work bay right here is just an open canopy. It's actually an independent structure that was built after the original building. Uh, and uh, the uh, facilities folks wanted to have a comparable work bay on the south side, so that hatched area that's called new covered area, uh, that's down there on the grid line G and H area between one and three, uh, that will be an area that, that more or less mirrors what you have on the other side. Uh, we are gonna look at uh, uh, how we treat the, the tie-in of those buildings right now that uh, that upper level is, is totally independent of your main building and essentially flashed. So it, it's, you know, if, if they def sway differently, it could be problematic. So we want to look at that and see if, if there's anything we could do to improve that as a part of this re -roof. So we'll do that. Uh, but the big thing for them is they really wanted uh, an additional uh, uh, meeting and break room area, and that's the area shown over to the, to the right, Kel, if you could hit that on the north side up there. Right there, yeah. So that will be a, a new large uh, uh, space with, with kitchen facilities and so forth on the one side. Uh, and it will, you actually exit that facility to be able to come in the door into the main facility. So it's again, kind of an independent, uh, but it will be tied in a, in a a manner that uh, that won't put any additional load on the existing building because it was not designed that way, but will be uh, tied laterally such that it'll provide a good good system for you. So uh, that's the plan for that area. Uh, Bobby and his team gave us some some input on, on what they wanted to see in that uh, in that area, and we'll be developing that further. Uh, and, and getting that ready to go to bid as well. And again, that's one that I think we can get done in a pretty pretty uh, expeditious manner, as you can see. I mean, we've basically done our contract a week and, and we've been able to get elevations and, and some things in place. So I want you to know that we're gonna be working hard to get to uh, bid documents so, so that we can get these two going. Uh, and so uh, that's reflecting what uh, that facility would be. What we haven't done anything with yet on that site is uh, there is that open canopy over kind of on the south uh, west part of the property mm -hmm. uh, and it took a pretty big hit uh, and it needs to be uh, at least uh, probably a good third of the fr uh, structural framing and then a lot of the uh, secondary uh, purlins and, and sheeting need to be replaced on it so we'll be putting that package together as well. A uh, couple of little challenges where we're putting in that new uh, break room area. Uh, it does get over into an area where you've got some uh, electrical coming out of the building and some, some air conditioners. So we've got to kind of look at all of that and, and see you know, what to do most practically there. 
and whether that's narrow the building up and lengthen it a little bit to keep from getting into that or if it's easy enough to uh, address that and, and relocate, then we'll do that too uh, to try to keep it uh, looking functional and, and proportional to the rest of your facility. Okay, uh, so I think that's that on, uh, yeah, if you had any questions on the, on the uh, fire station or the or this facility, but I'd be glad to, to field questions on those two if you, if you have any. Talked to the chief about this about a year and a half ago. He really wants a fire pole. Where's the fire pole gonna go? <laughs> we'll, we'll find a spot for it. There we go, thank you. <laughs> and we put a lot of them in. We just put one in over at the Mosquito Control District building and, and at the beach. So fire house has a fire Got some experience fire. with it. <laughs> Not trying to be joking, but uh, a fire pole that doesn't go anywhere is called something else. Mm -hmm. I thought you said a flagpole. We just did a flagpole. <laughs> we can do a fire pole too. If just, we need just want to make sure you understand that. I mean, it is a one-story building. <laughs> okay. I'm just checking. I, I had a question for you, and this is just out of my own curiosity. On that very top drawing, on the right-hand side, it says "remove man door," and then there is a black thing right above it. I'm just curious what that is. I mean, there's a few of them. We're removing man doors, but there's a black square above it. Are we just moving it over or making it bigger or what? But, yeah, I'm not sure. Like exactly on this one right here. See right here? Mm -hmm. It says remove man door, but then there's a, a black square above it. I was just curious. Yeah. It's not important. I'm just wondering. Why I'll, we're taking I'll them take out. a look at it. It's, it's, you're talking about over here on the right hand side that's actually a window that's being shown the dark the, the dark here is a win existing window and you're going to remove the door there yes ma'am just remove and replace it oh okay yeah Thank it's, you. it's 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 uh, just want to make sure they could get out of the other end of the building yes ma'am we're we're, we're uh, <laughs> uh i mean it says remove but it needs to say remove and replace that's that's what's happening All right, let's move over to uh, the Library and Media Center. Uh, we have no drawings developed yet, but I uh, wanted to at least talk with you about uh, where we were headed with that. I think you guys have seen a good bit of that uh, uh, already tonight as far as master planning uh, stuff. But uh, as far as just the planning of the space, just thought we'd show you a little bit about programming-wise some of the things that we would do. and. Uh, basically what we've done in there is, is gone in and identified all of the primary spaces, but then also uh, showed you the support spaces and, and you know just the square footage that, that it takes just for those support spaces. It's, as you know, uh, and, and very keen in, in Vicki's comments about cost and trying to stay within sure. budget, uh, your existing facility you know, was originally around 4,500 square feet and you had about a 4,500 4, square foot addition to it. So you had about 9,000 square feet of, of library and media center. And, and what we're gonna be able to build within budget where we're at is gonna drop you back down to potentially around 3,500 square feet. Uh, and so, you know, it starts getting a little bit challenging uh, we had a kind of a kickoff meeting last Friday to kind of talk a little bit about it and a lot's got to take place uh, now to, to vet those spaces. But uh, one other thing that was commented on is, is that you have been able to add some, some space in, in this facility uh, like computer rooms and things of that nature that there may be some complement there. We talked about the idea of putting a, a covered but open breezeway between this facility and, and, and the new facility that we'll be designing uh, such that you could, uh, you know, double up on like computer room and things like that. So we'll look at that and try to where there's complementary capabilities, you know, it may be some things that could, could not necessarily have to be built with the new media center or even planned as a future. What, what we're thinking is that we would like to try to build what you got to have now on the uh, on this north end with provisions and the capability if you ever wanted to to expand some to the south to pick up some of the additional 
facilities that you might want. So we'll be kind of taking that mindset into it as we try to help steer uh, the planning of it. Uh, but it just, uh, you, you know, as far as key spaces, vestibule entrance, circulation desk, reception, uh, talked about, uh, you know, some, some coffee and, and uh, a station of that type. Uh, book stacks, a typical place where, where you would, you know, be storing all your books and so forth. Uh, children's area, computer lab, multi-purpose room, uh, and offices. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think we really have to vet how much of that uh, in, in, uh, in, in the uh, form of offices and so forth that we really need now. So we'll be going through all of that. Uh, do you have the uh, kind of the layout? Uh, it's not really a layout, but it's, it's what we call block diagrams. So, so you know, it's just functionality stuff. Uh, some of the things that you have to have up there in the left uh, side there, you know, as far as uh, your, your uh, bathrooms and mechanical, electrical, IT, those types of things that you just don't have any choice. You gotta have those in it. And then the things that you wanna build into it. So we'll be working with all of that and trying to establish uh, the square footages and to then ultimately put that into uh, a footprint that works for you. We've actually played around with some of that, but we'd be crazy to bring that in here tonight and show it to you without you having a chance to vet it and, and give us input. So this is just to kind of show you procedurally what we'll be going through. And then we also know, and we've reached out to uh, Mr. Sorcy and, and his team uh, that put the master plan together here uh, and who's building the aesthetics of, of the whole area and we'll be coordinating closely with him on elevations. When we come to you next time, uh, our hope would be to bring some good vetted floor plans and elevations to start giving you a real flavor for what that facility will look like. So, uh, that's about as much as we can give you on that one tonight, but uh, uh, it, is, it is one that, that uh, really uh, merits uh, a lot of good planning. And uh, you know, from our perspective, we wanna make sure that whatever users that you have that want to be a part of helping develop this, we would be glad to, to have them join us in those planning sessions, so. Any questions? Thank you, sir. The commission, got any questions? Any comments? No? No? Public have any questions for the center? Thank you very, very much, sir. We, we thank you for the confidence and look forward to getting it further developed. Look forward to seeing the rebuild for sure. Right. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight and especially to the professionals that are doing all the hard work for us and for putting up with us. You know, I know we've, we've kind of jerked you around a time or two moving in different directions, but I think we're all on the right page and the right course now. So hopefully we can get this thing moving and, and, and built. So thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Y'all have a good evening.